Hi friends, Miss Danny from the Pleasant Hills Public Library. And I'm so excited to be here with you today for week two of our virtual fairy tale steam. This week we are focusing on Rapunzel. Now the story of Rapunzel was made famous by the Brothers Grimm who were German, but it has origins in France and Italy. And like many other folk and fairy tales, it now has versions found all around the world. So today we're gonna to start with a story based on the Brothers Grimm version. I have another short, silly story just for fun. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, books that you can request from our curbside pickup that relate to Rapunzel. And then we'll get to our STEAM challenge. Now, do you remember what the letters in STEAM stand for? I bet you do. Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. And our challenge today will have you practicing a little bit from all of those subject areas. So let's get started with our story. Our story today comes from the Random House Book of Fairy Tales, adapted by Amy Elhark and illustrated by Diane Good, and read with permission of Penguin Random House. Rapunzel, the Brothers Grimm. A man and his wife had long wished for a child, and after many years had passed, it seemed that at last they were to have one. Their house was in the countryside, and at the back was a little window that overlooked a beautiful garden planted with vegetables and flowers. But it was surrounded by a high wall, and no one dared go in there, for it belonged to a powerful witch. One day, the wife was standing by the window and looking down into the garden when she saw a bed of Rapunzel greens. They looked so fresh and lovely that she longed for some to eat. Each day her longing increased until she became pale and sickly and would take no other food. Then her husband was alarmed and said, What is the matter, dear wife? Ah, oh, she answered, If I cannot have some of the Rapunzel from the garden behind our house, I shall surely die. Her husband, who loved her, knew he would have to bring her the Rapunzel she wanted, no matter what the cost. At twilight, he climbed over the wall into the witch's garden. Quickly, he picked a handful of the Rapunzel and took it to his wife. She made a salad and ate it greedily, but she was still not satisfied. The taste was so wonderful that she had to have more of the Rapunzel at once. She wept and begged until her husband agreed to go back into the witch's garden. Again in the twilight he set out, but this time when he climbed over the wall, he saw the witch standing before him. How dare you come into my garden and steal my Rapunzel, she said angrily. You will have to suffer for it. The man was terribly afraid. Oh, please take pity on me, he answered. I had to come here. My wife saw the Rapunzel from the window and her longing for it is so great that she will die if she cannot have any. Then the rage left the witch's face, and she said, If what you say is true, I shall allow you to take away as much as you want, but on one condition. You must give me the child your wife is carrying. I will bring it up as my own and care for it like a mother. In his fear, the man consented to everything, and when the baby was born, the witch came for her and gave her the name Rapunzel. As the years went by, Rapunzel grew to be the most beautiful child imaginable. When she was 12, the witch took her away and shut her up in a tower that stood in a forest. And it had neither staircase nor doors and only a little window high up in the wall. Each time the witch wanted to come in, she would stand below it and cry, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel had magnificent long hair, as fine as spun gold. When she heard the witch's voice, she would unfasten her braids and twist them around a hook by the window. Then the hair would fall 20 feet down and the witch would climb up on it. Some time later, it happened that the king's son was riding through the forest and passed close by the tower. As he did, he heard a song so lovely and clear that he stood still to listen. Rapunzel sang each day in her loneliness, and it was her voice that he heard. The king's son wanted to climb up to her and looked for a door to the tower, but none were to be found. He rode home, but his thoughts were haunted by Rapunzel's sweet song, and he returned again and again to the forest to listen. 
Once, when he was hidden behind a tree, he saw a witch come to the tower and call out, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. And then Rapunzel lowered her hair and the witch climbed up to her. Oh, well, if that is the ladder one must climb, I too shall try it, he said to himself. And the next day, when it began to grow dark, he went to the tower and cried, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. At once the hair was lowered and the king's son climbed up on it. Rapunzel was terrified, for she had never seen a man, but the king's son spoke to her gently and told her how beautiful her song had been. Then she lost her fear, and when he asked if she would have him for her husband, she agreed. She could see that he was young and handsome, and she thought that he was kind. He will love me better than the old mother Gothel does, she said to herself, and she laid her hand in his. I will gladly go with you, she told him, but I do not know how I am to get down from this tower. I'll tell you what, when you come each evening, you must bring me a skein of silk to twist into a ladder, and as soon as it is long enough, I will come down upon it, and we will ride away on your horse. The witch knew nothing until one day Rapunzel said to her, well, tell me, Mother Gothel, why is it you are so much heavier to draw up than the young prince? Oh, you wicked child, cried the witch. I thought I had separated you from the world, and yet you have deceived me. In her rage, she seized Rapunzel's beautiful hair, twisted it twice round her left hand, and cut it off with a pair of shears. When the hair lay upon the ground, she took poor Rapunzel into a vast wilderness and abandoned her there. In the evening, the witch returned to the tower and fastened the hair onto a hook by the window, and she waited until the prince came and called, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair! And then she lowered it. The prince climbed up, and there, crouched beneath the window, was the witch, who glared at him with rage and wickedness. Ah, she cried mockingly, you have come to fetch your love, but the pretty bird has flown from her nest and she can sing no more. Rapunzel is lost to you. Never shall you see her again. In his pain and grief, the prince leaped from the tower, and though he was not killed, his eyes were pierced by the thorns that he fell on. Weeping and lamenting, he roamed about blindly in the forest and had nothing but roots and berries to eat. After many years of wandering alone, he at last came into the wilderness where Rapunzel lived in poverty and wretchedness. The prince heard a clear, sweet voice, and it seemed so familiar to him that he went towards it. Rapunzel knew him at once and fell weeping upon his neck. Two of her tears wetted his eyes, and they grew clear again so he could see all that was before him. Then he took Rapunzel back to his kingdom, where they were greeted with great rejoicing, and there they lived for a long time afterwards in happiness and peace. To lighten the mood a little bit, I wanted to share a different version of Rapunzel. This is Falling for Rapunzel, written by Leah Wilcox, illustrated by Lydia Monks, and also read today with permission of Penguin Random House. And this is just a silly version, so I hope you enjoy it. Once upon a bad hair day, a prince rode up Rapunzel's way. From up above he heard her whine, upset her hair had lost its shine. He thought her crying was a plea, and sailed forth to set her free. Alas, she was too far away to quite make out what he would say. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, throw down your hair! She thought he said, your underwear. No, Rapunzel, your curly locks. Rapunzel threw down dirty socks. Ugh. Please, love, just your silky tresses. She thought he asked for silky dresses. In lace and frills up to his head, the prince's cheeks were blushing red. Rapunzel, do you have a rope? Rapunzel dropped a cantaloupe. It burst in pieces on his head. Oh, bad catch, Rapunzel said. Perhaps, he sighed, this is a test. And bound by love, he did not rest. Okay, Rapunzel, how about twine? She heaved out her blue ribbon swine. By now the prince was feeling hammered, not to mention less enamored. He growled up, do you have a ladder? 
Rapunzel tossed out pancake batter. It covered him from head to toe, and she yelled, It's better cooked, you know. At this, the poor prince had a cry, then cupped his hands for one last try. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your braid. Confused, Rapunzel pushed out her maid. The maid fell squarely on the prince, quite pleased with the coincidence. She nimbly jumped off his lap and soon revived the flattened shaft. Then smiling said, for what it's worth, you'll find I'm really down to earth. His young heart thrilled, he gave a hoot for what was more. The maid was cute. She set the prince upon his steed then leapt behind with graceful speed. And leaning close so he could hear, she whispered something in his ear. I fell for you when we first met. He nodded. Oh, how could I forget? Rapunzel watched them ride from sight. Oh, I'm glad I finally heard them right. I hope if they come back for more, they'll think to knock on my back door. <laughs> Isn't that a silly version? That's what we call a fractured fairy tale. So my friends, I'd like to talk to you about a handful of books that you can check out using our curbside pickup service. To request any of the books that I'm gonna talk about, you can call us at 412-655-2424. You can send us an email to pleasanthills at einetwork.net, or you can send us a Facebook message. If you are sending us a Facebook message or an email, I request that you put the name of the library card you'd like it to be checked out on and the title or titles you'd like to request. So we're gonna start with a brand new book today. It's part of a new series too, the Fairy Tale You Choose series. And we have a handful of them here, but this is the Rapunzel one. So as you read, you can make different choices which will change the ending. This is written by Michelle Jabowski, it's an interactive fairy tale adventure. This is a fun chapter book you might enjoy. It's called Grounded, The Adventures of Rapunzel, written by Megan Morrison. It's a marvelous adventure, fun family drama with a little bit of humor thrown in and a great introduction to the story of Rapunzel. If you're a fan of fairy tales, you'll probably enjoy this book. This is Straw into Gold, Fairy Tales Respun by Hilary McKay and illustrated by Sarah Gibb. It features several different classic stories reimagined for the modern world. I have another new series for you. This is the Far Out Fairy Tales graphic novel series. This one is Rapunzel versus Frankenstein. All of the stories in this series are fractured versions of fairy tales, meaning they take the story as you know it and they turn it on its head, often introducing characters from other classic literature. If you enjoy graphic novels, you might also really enjoy this one. This is Rapunzel's Revenge, written by Shannon and Dean Hale and illustrated by Nathan Hale. And it reimagines, reimagines Rapunzel as a Western adventure where she's the hero. If you'd like to read the original Grimm tale in all of its glory goodness, I suggest you check out this one, Rapunzel, a picture book by Felix Hoffman. It follows the Grimm version very closely. Another one that's pretty close to the Grimm version is Rapunzel, illustrated by Paul O. Zielinski, and he has beautiful illustrations that go along with the story. One last book I'd like to highlight Princess Tales from Around the World, a Once Upon the, a Time in Rhyme with Seek and Find Pictures, adapted by Grace Macaron and illustrated by Gail Deal Markin. This one features several fairy tales that have princesses in them, much like Rapunzel. And it has really good illustrations where you can look for certain things that are mentioned in the story and then extra things at the end. And now it's time for Steam. So our challenge today is to help Rapunzel get out of the tower without being thrown into the wilderness, without falling onto thorns. We want her to get out safely and be able to return when she wants to. 
We do have a take-home kit that you can reserve or pick up until supplies run out. They are available starting today, Monday, June 22nd, until the supplies are gone. In the kit, you get a pre-cut paper towel tube that'll be part of your tower, a pre-cut piece of cardstock that will also be part of your tower, five index cards, six popsicle sticks, 10 toothpicks, four foam popsicle sticks, and a printout of Rapunzel. Now, if you are unable to get our kit, you can use any materials that you can find at home to build a tower and an escape and return route. So to build your tower, you're gonna take this piece of cardstock that kind of looks like Pac-Man, and you're gonna fold it over itself like this to make a cone. The best way to secure your cone is with a little bit of tape. I found it best to tape both sides just to keep it secure, but it's up to you. And after that, you can tape or glue it onto your tube to make your tower. And you'll notice there's no door, just a window that opens and closes. Now, how can Rapunzel get out of her tower and come back? Well, that's up to you to design a way for her to do it. That's part of the challenge. I'd like to give you a couple ideas though. You could build a slide. You could build it. Uh oh, mine's not fully dry yet. A ladder. You could do some kind of combination of the two. It's up to you. Once you've completed the challenge, we would love to see a picture of your finished project. You can email us a picture to pleasanthills at einetwork.net. You can send us a message with your picture on Facebook or we have a special Facebook group just for summer reading called Pleasant Hills Library SRC Imagine Your Story. And you can post a picture there for other members of our community to see and enjoy. If you have any questions or concerns, we would love to help you out. Again, you can email us. You can call us at 412-655-2424. Well, thanks for joining me today, friends, for our virtual fairy tale steam. I hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next week for Gingerbread Man Needs a Boat. Oh, dear. Bye, friends.